You ready? Yeah. You ready? All right, hold on. Here we go. We're here in the Eagle newsroom. This is the My Aggie Nation podcast. I'm Travis Brown with the Eagle, alongside the legend Robert Cessna, longtime Eaglet, as he usually likes to say. Uh, season's over. Summer's here. You just got. It. I see you're nice and golden, suntanned from coming back from your vacation. It's a good time to look back at what Texas A&M was able to do through the season. You had a column kind of talking about A&M and the Directors Cup. Of course, they finished 25th this year. Uh, would have been 37th if it weren't for the men, the baseball team, and the women's golf team. Uh, they have a, a pretty good history of being in the top 15 from 2009 to 2019. Uh, six top 10 finish, 11 of 20. 12 times were in the top 15. Uh, they dropped to 19th last year and, of course, 25th this year. Uh, what, what did you see kind of in that analysis, and, and why was AM down a little bit this year? You know, it, it was kind of interesting because I, I did get into that. You're right. I thought about doing something about that on vacation just because the spring sports were so well. And, and it's funny because uh, I, I think I maybe speak for a lot of sports writers. I can remember when Bill Byrne came here as athletic director, he was really big in to the, at that time, the Sears cup, uh, it was called showing an all around, uh, program really big into the Olympic sports. And I remember some Texas people making fun of A&M because they were saying, Oh, they're so good in the Olympic sports and the female sports, but what about the male sports? And back then, maybe for some people it wasn't kosher, but now you fast forward, uh, all sports matter. We know they do not add up the same. Football, you know, and volleyball are never going to stay the same, be the same as far as rating. But everybody, particularly in the SEC, you want an all-around program. You might be weak in one or two sports, but you want a strong program all the way around. And I, I'm sure Russ Burke, the, the current AD, is that way. I think everybody feels that way. And I think that has gradually become important. And now you look, Texas has won back-to-back. But to get to the point of your, your answer first, it's hard really to gauge, to put you f- – handle on it because you got to look at a lot of factors because we had things happen that haven't happened in the last decade a and women's basketball didn't make the make the postseason soccer team didn't make the postseason uh volleyball didn't make the post you still on down but particularly those first two you just count on them getting 25 50 points or, or so that didn't happen so it, it, it was an anomaly and then the the foot you know you look at all these things the men's basketball team they came close to having a good season but by the by the Directors' Cup, they didn't earn enough points. So there's a lot of things that go into that. And actually, it could have been lower than, than the 37th, uh, Travis, because what happens is you got to remember if AM doesn't make uh, the NCAA tournament in women's golf – or in baseball, those points trinkle down and people underneath them might have got more points and they could have even been high, lower than 37th. But, you know, as I wrote my column, it's no cause for concern. It's just what it is. A&M needs to do better all around. And you can see Ross Bork is is gradually doing that. He, he hired a new softball coach. He hired a new women's women's golf coach recently. He hired a new baseball coach recently. Uh, when you're in the SEC, you got to be – performance driven maybe more so than I think than any conference and it's hard to say that to me unless you cover multi conferences you can say all oh, the big 12 cares the big 12 cares not like the SEC the SEC cares about softball the SEC cares about baseball the SEC now cares more about men's basketball I think than when they went into the league I got to shut up. I'm talking too much. <laughs> no, um, I was actually like maybe about to sneeze. So you, you maybe you needed to keep talking. <laughs> um, so well, let's let's kind of reboot here a little bit, and and maybe not just the uh, the, the the real nitty gritty of it, but but how how do they get points in the Directors Cup for people who maybe aren't aware of what the Directors Cup is? H- how do you score? How do you get ranked in that in that competition? Good point, and I think I I, I will say this correctly. I think there's like possible of 100 points per sport. And of course, if it's an NCAA championship, and they also have an NAIA, so they go different divisions. You look at golf, you have these points uh, available. Did you finish first? I think you get you finish first, you get 800, I mean, even 100, then on down to where you make it. I think maybe if you, you just get into tournaments, 25, but varying points. And where there's no uh, championships, a la football, they go by the, the rankings. I don't. I think it's maybe the final 
uh, college football rankings, but mostly it's by the NCAA sanction. That's why AM's not getting points in equestrian because equestrian, you know, you know you know, it's it's not one of the sports that counts as far as being what's under the criteria. So there are some, and I might be wrong on the number. You have to have certain, so many male and, and female sports. But after you get to uh, it's 10 or 11, it's just your highest uh, 15, three or four sports after that. So once again, every sport does matter. And, they, and over the years, they've tweaked the way they do it because Stanford for years had all these sports. So that way they could get a lot of points in sports that maybe other uh, programs didn't have and they had an advantage, but they've tweaked the scoring system uh, over the years. And it definitely is reflected for an all around program. So the, the goal is making it's, the NCAA, NCAA tournament, tournament yeah. and then advancing Go as high as you can. Right. Like Ada you know, might've got like 89 or 85 points for finishing third in baseball, they got the same amount of points. What? Well, no, what's funny is I have to I have to rephrase that because I, I didn't do tons of research nitty gritty like that. Because I thought one thing was funny is, if I'm not mistaken, the golf and baseball they both finished third. One of those sports they got one more point, mm. and you know I didn't go into it right, because for but the, yeah, generally yeah. speaking, generally speaking, making the NCAA tournament, advancing, and how far you get, the further you go, the more points you get. Exactly. So uh, let's we can kind of dissect not in looking back on why necessarily things didn't go great for A and M this year. You can kind of look ahead towards what's in the, going in the future. Uh, if you look in the fall, we mentioned A and M soccer. They have had, I think at one time, their top six attackers out all at the same time, injury plagued. They couldn't muster any offense. They were having to just throw freshmen out on offense. Uh, it was a fluke kind of deal for G in the soccer. And you got to think that they'll be able to bounce back into their ways. Uh, Injuries aside, uh, uh, th- this upcoming year, uh, at football. Everyone knows what happened. Football, uh, not not necessarily the year that they were expecting. I think the one to really focus on in the fall is volleyball because they started off with a bang under Bird Coon, uh, made it as far as they've ever made it uh, when they, and, and I believe her second season uh, here in, in Aggieland, but she's in a contract year this year, uh, and they have not really been up to snuff uh, over the last couple of years, haven't made any NCAA tournaments. A little bit different situation there because there isn't a conference tournament. you got to be strong in the regular season, uh, but it'll be interesting to see because as Ross Bjork has shown, save for I think one head coach, He's been known just to let contracts expire when you look at Rob Childress, when you look at uh, Joe Evans. And like I said, this is a contract year for Bird Coon. And a lot of that fall is what really brought the 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 scores down because they did have uh, other than women's basketball they did have a good winter and a great spring uh, uh, save for, for for softball uh, what are some other aspects that you can see moving forward uh, some other sports you can see moving forward that'll kind of push things uh, over the edge well I think you know men's tennis you can always count them having a deep run and I think they lost in the first round mm-hmm. of the NCAA tournament that they, they got past they didn't even get out of uh, they didn't host this year, which is kind of unusual because Steve Denton is good for, you know, traditionally getting to the Sweet 16, so to speak. So you think men's tennis, they're, they're a lot of underclassmen. They're going to be good. As you mentioned, there's probably not a coach has more uh, Director's Cup points in their time at A&M than G. Guerrero. So, you know, the soccer is going to bounce back. Uh, I really think men's basketball will make the NCAA tournament uh, this year. So once again is, yeah, you want to go deep. But you saw in the spring how quickly you can add up points when five teams had top 10 finishes. I mean, they mopped up in the spring. Yeah, you want the top 10 finishes, but you just want to place – you know, and get get there in all the sports because, uh, like track, they get they get so many points, but they didn't get it in cross country. Then, so you know, do they worry about that since they score so many in indoor and outdoors? But you know, what do we mention if if they could if they could get the NCAA tournament in the volleyball, which I think they need to do, as you mentioned under Bird, they're going to probably make it in men's basketball. They're going to make it in women's basketball. They didn't. They're going to make it in, in soccer. So you're looking at maybe 100, 150 points right there, and you start looking, you know, that can put you up maybe 10 spots alone. So once again, is you're getting back to what you touched on. Volleyball's under the 
spotlight right now because Bork wants good results in all sports. Obviously, you can't have them every year, but when you're a powerhouse like A&M and you miss out like two, three years in a row, as we've seen in Joe Evans, it wasn't that long ago she was in the College World Series. You and I drove up to Oklahoma mm-hmm. City, but it's what have you done for me lately? And that's the the, the, the position you know, K- uh, Kuhn is in right now. And here's the deal is, a has got all the resources. They give you everything you need. Uh, you know, you see Schlossnagel come in first year. You see Caldwell come in with golf. They they get to the, you know, f- top three finishes. You don't expect that from everybody, but you expect NCAA tournament. Mm-hmm. So let's move a little bit past Director's Cup and just look at the overall state of the program. When you look at uh, coaches, facilities, all the above. You can even kind of throw some NIL things in there, even though that's kind of uh, a, a little bit of a sidebar. You know, they're building a new indoor track. They're on pace to build a whole new football uh, facility and uh, indoor system there. You have uh, Jim Schlossnagel, who is saying by 2025 at the latest, they're going to have renovations at Bluebell Park. Uh, and there's always been conversation about uh, Reed Arena. And then you can also look at Ellis Field. That is now one of the eyesores of the Mm -hmm. uh, uh, campus compared to all the other construction that's gone on everywhere else. Beyond that, where do you see the state of A&M's program right now heading into this this next season? Thanks. I feel you kind of put it on uh, on the tee ball for me, (laughs) uh, Travis, and I appreciate it. As a 69-year-old guy, I need everything on the tee. What I tried to allude to in my column is somewhere in the middle of it, too. When you take, you look at Texas and Texas A&M, and for years, we run this motor. Oh, Aggies, we don't want to be compared to Longhorns. We're in the SEC. We don't want to be compared. No, you, 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 A&M and Texas are tied forever together. Now they're in the conference. You always look at A&M. You think about the great spring they had. Okay, if A&M could have gone to a major bowl game last year and won, wanted or done well, just think about how excited people would be around here. I mean, they yeah, they finished 25th, but let's say they went to a major bowl and won it. They'd, they'd be in the 18s or 19s, whatever. It'd, even, it'd be unbelievable around here. People would really be jacked up. You take Texas. Texas won their second straight director's cup. I think they won five national championships. Some might be wrong. Might be only three. Uh, didn't, didn't know you are going to hit me with that. But they sucked in football. Mm-hmm. So they can't brag about anything. They won all those national championships. And the people are just laughing and go, what would you do in football? You know, five, SEC shorts would do, ought to do that. What'd you do in football? That's the one they count to five and seven. So Texas can't brag and A&M really can't brag. A&M can't brag because they screwed up in too many of the minor sports and didn't, co- they, they, they didn't, they didn't pay in the sport that matters most. Uh, yeah. They beat Alabama, but they didn't finish it off. If they'd have finished it off, they'd have been great. It'd have been a great off season. Texas, even worse shape than AM, even though they won the Director's Cup, cut five and seven in football. Can you imagine if AM would have won the Director's Cup this year and been five and seven in football? Oh my gosh, I wouldn't want to be around here because you could say, hey, way to go, women's basketball, way to go, softball, way to go, volleyball, but five and seven in football. That's all the time we have for this week's My Aggie Nation podcast. For Robert Cessna, I'm Travis Brown. This is the My Aggie Nation podcast, and we'll see you next week. It seems like every day, everything just has a way, the way to must have the seams. But if we don't watch what we're doing, our hearts will get ruined by silly things. Good love ain't easy, girl, we know that's true. If we want to keep it, we got to watch everything that we do. Make sure you're sticking with me. Don't